July is National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, shining a light on the unique challenges faced by diverse groups. The American Psychiatric Association reports that while minority populations can have lower rates of mental health issues, those issues are more persistent and impactful due to discrimination and a lack of representation in healthcare. So we have joining us now our culturally, we're gonna talk a little bit of this with our race and culture contributor, Shay Johnson, because this, this is a big problem that we have talked about before. So talk about the fact that they're observing this for a month. Oh, a month absolutely. Of July. I think this is absolutely a crucial um, observance, right? We have to observe this because it talks about the challenges that BIPOC communities actually face during uh, mental health crises, right? And it also talks about the barriers, the lack of education or lack of knowing of resources. And it highlights how we can make this an inclusive conversation around healthcare. And we need to be having those conversations. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and make everybody feel like comfortable yes, where they're going for help. absolutely. You have found some organizations we wanna talk about. And for instance, the Asian Pacific Development Center. Yes. Tell me uh, like what they do and what they're known for. I love this for our Asian Pacific um, Islanders and those around that community because they really take away the nuances and have the real actual facts of what you need in that community. And they start to break it down into really community-based because we know cultural beliefs sometimes can get in the way of the help that you need because it's not tailored to your needs. And they're making sure that they give you what you need amongst your beliefs and wrapping around wraparound services. Yeah, because you're right. It's how families view things and how everything so happens. And then let's talk about another group. This is the Rocky Mountain Immigrant Advocacy Network. Yes. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. But they help immigrant adults, that's a whole new community that's uh, trying to live in our communities. Kim, I think we don't talk about this enough, right? What immigrants actually need and the supports that are very different from what other BIPOC communities need. Right. So when you talk about deportation processes, right? What do they need during that time? This organization is making sure they tailor the needs to the people that are immigrants that actually need services that are not being given on everyday resources. And so they're wrapping around their services around people that are immigrants because they have very specific needs. And we need to address those. Yeah, and, and you think about what they've gone through. I mean, yeah. alone, oftentimes there's PTSD and things <laughs> they're gonna deal with for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Online services are available like the Liberate app. I've yes. not heard of this for the BIPOC community and Talkspace support group. And so uh, how do they focus and who do they reach? Well, I think it's really important that we highlight online resources, right? Because yeah. everybody doesn't have access to get out and go. So I like the click of a phone can get you there. The click of a computer can get you there. And we know that there's not a one size fit all, fits all. So these actually give you support. They give you a space with guidance. They give you things that are going to help you um, for individuals individuals and minority communities that have specific needs again. And they're wrapping their services around what do you need and making sure they get you to the space that actually provides what you need. Yeah, and it's a safe place to go when safe you're a space. little worried. Yeah, and sometimes you don't want to talk to somebody. You're like, can I just get on the computer and press a button and, you yeah, know, can, until no, I get comfortable? I'm okay and, in this area. Yeah. Um, let's also, like, also end with the fact of racial trauma and the mm. guide to the racial stressors and allies yeah. and how important all this connects and how we could just foster better understanding. Absolutely, this is a way to educate, um, also a way to equip individuals how to navigate racial trauma. Because sometimes you feel like you're alone, right? Mm -hmm. And you need some empathy, you need understanding, and you need to feel like there's an inclusive society that understands you are going through racial trauma. I love for people to understand that they're not alone and there's something that can help them. And I think when we start to break down racial traumas, we're like, oh, that's a microaggression. I'm not the only person feeling this. I'm so glad that I can understand what this is and then have a guide to work through that. And, and for allies to know what to say. Yes, absolutely. Like sometimes you're just like, I don't know what to say, so I'll say nothing, that's right. not good. And that's not any help, right? And so when we're looking at really addressing mental health, we have to know that minority groups, BIPOC groups, deal with so much and they need special services and there's no one size fits all in any community, but we really have to go out of the way to make sure that we know that there are resources for BIPOC communities during mental health all year round. Okay, I'm glad this month rolled around because you yes. highlight a lot of them. So we do want to give you a few of those resources to consider. They're on your screen right now, right now and we're working to get this information up on 9news.com and on the 9 News Plus app. So, Shay, thank you. You talked us through a lot of them today. Absolutely. Mental health matters, so let's make sure we're doing the work and providing the resources for our communities. Okay.
Have a good weekend. Thank you, you too. All right, we'll be right back.